Good evening. Uh, my name is Bill Hudson. I'm a county commissioner. Good evening, and uh, welcome to our. our uh, my first name is Bill Hudson. I'm a county commissioner. The, uh, and uh, welcome to uh, our, uh, our first meeting for the know, public regarding the uh, uh, courthouse renovations uh, to the as, courthouse uh, and, and changes at the courthouse site. Considering uh, uh, to include the combination renovations to the courthouse and, and changes at the courthouse site. Of common pleas uh, to Medina include the combination of the Medina Municipal Court and so the as a, uh, a starter here Medina tonight, I, there is an agenda that is floating around. If you don't have so one, as a, uh, uh, a starter here tonight, I, there is an agenda I, that is like floating around. If you don't have one, there should be principal moderators tonight. And I'd like to introduce our Monica Summers, principal. Uh, moderators Nancy Nazik tonight and Phil uh, leaders Shilfar of discussion from uh, Branstad Monica and Summers uh, Nancy Nazik is the and architectural Phil firm uh, that the county and the city from Branstetter and Carroll Branstetter uh, and Carroll is the architectural the firm that the county and the city have engaged uh, to begin designing the courthouse and this is a joint project with the city um, the city of Medina and the county of Medina have uh, entered into an agreement to share costs and, and in the design and hopefully ultimately in the construction or renovation uh, of the courthouse facility. So I'd like to go down the line here and have everyone introduce themselves. Uh, so starting with the mayor. I'm Dennis Hanwell, I'm the mayor. I'm John Coyne, the president of city council for Medina. Scott Miller, county administrator. Stephen Bastine, uh, facilities director for the county. Bob Starcher, Ward 1, Council, City of Medina. Jim Shields, Ward 4, Council, City of Medina. Paul Rose, Council at Large, City of Medina. Bill Lamb, Council at Large, City of Medina. Denny Simpson, Ward 2, Councilman, City of Medina. Colleen Swedek, County Commissioner. Kevin Dunn, Probate Juvenile Judge. Thank you. So where are we at? Uh, first off, we started off um, a year and a half or two years ago with a facilities committee comprised of uh, principally county folks and uh, the, the mayor and uh, several folks from the general public to look at county facilities and to decide which facilities we thought we needed, which facilities we thought we could uh, dispose of, uh, which facilities needed significant renovations and so on. Um, the courthouse came to the top of our list uh, rather quickly. Uh, it has been a project that has been looked at by the county for, well, I know at least 10 years ago they started uh, another uh, uh, planning project uh, that in, in actually a very detailed planning project uh, involving the courthouse. So this is not the first go around. The city of Medina has, uh, I don't know, how many years have you guys looked at renovating? Two decades. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so the city has been considering uh, their courthouse uh, uh, concerns for uh, 20 years. So this is not a, uh, a new thing for the county or the city to engage in. Um, last year, uh, we engaged Branstetter and Carroll to do a feasibility study to see if a joint courthouse would fit on the current courthouse, the Common Pleas Courthouse site. And they uh, uh, talked to several of the stakeholders, many of the stakeholders, uh, inside the county uh, facilities, inside the courthouse, came up with some general parameters on the, the space requirements uh, for the various courts, and then came up with a what we would call a concept plan just to simply show the bulk and the size uh, of the type of structure that was needed. I want to stress that detailed designing has not taken place. Uh, that is what Branstetter and Carroll is currently engaged to do and what uh, we will move forward with. And this is the, uh, the first of uh, probably several meetings for the public to get uh, public sentiment and to understand what the concerns are out there in the community. And then uh, as we move forward with the planning, uh, hopefully we can take those into consideration. Uh, Mayor, would you like to say any, any words? No, I think that's fine. Okay, without further ado, I will turn it over to uh, Nancy and Monica. Uh, 
Um, good evening. Uh, my name is Monica Sumner, as previously introduced. I'll be uh, sharing with you some information about the project and about our work to this point. Nancy Nozick is going to be uh, behind me at the computer station taking copious notes. And Mr. Schulfarth here is going to be uh, writing relevant things that he hears as the public comes up for comment. He's going to be recording those things visually so you can see that we're actually capturing uh, things that we are hearing and things that you are saying to us, right? Uh, thank you for the uh, introduction. Uh, it certainly is very exciting for us as architects to be here uh, with such an august body of people. We have all these nice elected folks over here and citizens who have come out to voice uh, their concerns, support, thoughts, or otherwise. Um, and we are all ears tonight. Um, so I encourage you all to uh, listen and learn and then share with us when the appropriate time comes. Ready to start? Okay. All right, as already uh, introduced, this is a joint uh, effort here between the city and the county. And um, let's go to the first slide. I apologize, it's been turned off. There we go. Uh, a very brief history. Uh, some of you in the room uh, probably already know these things about your building. Um, the original building that you see here, just the middle portion, was constructed in 1840 and 1841. So very rich, deep heritage here with architecture in your community. Then the flanking towers and clock tower were added in 1873. Later additions then ensued in 1906, 33, and 52. So lots of additions, lots of changes have been made to this building over time. The new courthouse was constructed in 1969. And here we are in 2019, still using both of these buildings. All right, this is an aerial map just showing some of the existing conditions. And so as architects, we use a variety of tools to help communicate things. We use written word, we use oral presentation, we use drawings and diagrams. So we have put together this presentation with all of those things so that whatever um, manner in which you learn and uptake information, uh, hopefully you will get something out of this presentation. What we're looking at here is the original 1840 building, the ensuing additions, the 1969 building, and the building on the corner, which we are not addressing as a part of this project. We're showing images of the existing parking lot that's uh, on the uh, surface level behind the buildings and then to the back, back here, we have the existing parking deck. And of course, the beautiful square is right here. So let's dive into a history of the courthouse needs. We'll go through this fairly quickly, but it is important for everyone to understand a little bit uh, of depth of background for the project. Um, Mr. Hudson referenced that the uh, county has been studying uh, what to do with their project for at least 10 years. And so this uh, study sim um, uh, summary, excuse me, from 20 or 2007, <clears throat> Um, examined uh, the existing courthouse to be renovated for a total of a uh, little over 47,000 square feet with an addition then of a little over 24,000 square feet and then a total building was uh, planned to be uh, over 72,000 square feet in 2007. The estimate at that time was eight and a half million dollars. We parlay that into today's dollars and that comes to 11 million. So if the county were to build this today, it would cost $11 million. The problem with that is that if they were to build this today, it would not meet the current needs. If they would have built that in 2007, it would not be meeting the needs today. The project included uh, three common police courtrooms, one juvenile probate courtroom, one additional juvenile hearing room, and one domestic relations courtroom with six hearing rooms. And we've made a comparison slide for each of these, so this information will take on a little bit more meaning as we progress. So this is a, a very brief summary of the needs that were generated from a study done in 2007. 
In 2008, there was another study done, and this was a um, municipal court addition. It studied municipal court coming and doing an addition onto the back of the county courthouse. There was to be no work done at that time on the county building other than uh, minor renovations needed uh, to accommodate the addition. The estimate at that time was 7.4 million. In today's dollars, it would be over nine and a half million. And that would have done nothing at that time to um, address any needs of county courts. Um, the municipal court space included two courtrooms and three hearing rooms at that time. Then in 2009, yet another study was done. Um, and the existing court renovation space was 55,600 with an addition of uh, 43,800 in round numbers. That estimate at that time was 18 million. Parlay that into today's dollars would be over 23 million to build that. That project included two common police courtrooms. Remember the prior was three. This one included two, one juvenile probate courtroom and four hearing rooms. It also included one new future courtroom and one new probate hearing room one domestic relations courtroom, and four hearing rooms. So what this just shows you is that a myriad of studies have been done. Uh, the needs have been a little all over the place. Um, and so we are, we are picking up where these studies have left off to um, perform another study. Now, the most recent feasibility study that was referenced by Mr. Hudson uh, was just completed in February of this year by us. Uh, along with most of these folks over here. The purpose of this study was to, answer, was to answer three simple questions. Can municipal and county courts share a building? Question number one. There are different functionalities between municipal court and county court. There are different buckets of money. There are different people that those courts serve. So that was the big question. Can these two courts function in the same building and serve the public. A sub question to that was, can we gain efficiencies? Both entities need court buildings, are in desperate need for space, safety, security, better ways to serve the population. Can we do that together and gain some efficiencies? So that was task number one. Second then, we had to identify what is needed. In order to uh, ascertain that information, we met with all entities that we could have access to. So we met with a variety of court officials, we met with clerks, um, judges, so on and so on, uh, county officials, city officials, in order to determine um, what the need is and then how big is it going to be? Or how big do we think it needs to be? The third question then is how much will it cost? And these questions came um, in that order in terms of evaluating the information and putting that back to the committee. And then we have some, um, for that, we prepared graphic representation type floor plans. They were not construction documents, they were not uh, final drawings, but they were sort of um, examining how the spaces would coexist and could we meet the need of various courts. So those drawings were used, again, to be a graphic communication tool um, so people could respond to what we were thinking about. Here's a list of the current courthouse needs that have been laid before us. These are in bulk summary. There are a lot of ancillary spaces um, that support all of these, but the big spaces are two municipal courtrooms and one municipal magistrate hearing room three common pleas courtrooms, and one common pleas magistrate hearing room, one domestic relations courtroom, and five domestic relations hearing rooms, one juvenile probate courtroom, four juvenile probate magistrate hearing rooms, one future probate courtroom, and until it is needed for that function, it will be used by visiting judges and other functions in the courthouse. So it'd be a shared courtroom. A variety of appropriate office spaces for each judge and each magistrate. In case you didn't know, there are magistrates uh, in the building uh, sitting in uh, renovated coat closets. 
uh, under stairs, in um, cubbies, and wherever their spaces could find. So we think it's uh, better uh, if each official has an office to function in. Juvenile and adult probation for city and county um, would like to be in this building and be together. A proper and secure entrance is desired, as well as holding areas and uh, sufficient space for law enforcement personnel. So this is a list of bulk needs that came out of the feasibility study just last year. All right, a tiny moment of uh, explaining how a modern courthouse needs to function. Uh, Brancetter Carroll has designed about 30 courthouses. Uh, that includes some studies, so it wouldn't be all design, uh, throughout uh, Kentucky, Ohio, and West Virginia. So we spend a lot of time in the court market. We spend a lot of time in towns just like this. We do not have any courthouses that are in um, urban or city environments. They're always in small towns, counties, cities of various sizes. Um, but this is completely within the wheelhouse of our work and our familiarity level with courts. We've designed uh, county courts, municipal courts, mayor's courts, and then different states use different terminologies. So that'd be district courts, circuit courts, family courts, drug courts, you name it. Um, so that is a, a place of practice where we're very comfortable. The events of 9-11 changed our country forever. Those events also changed how we design public buildings. We must make public buildings safe. Um, it is incumbent on an architect to have you feel comfortable right now in this space. Did you think about that? That you need to feel safe while you're sitting here. So there are ways that we uh, employ design techniques to have the building be safe and secure so you don't have to worry about that. We employ those same things with courthouses. The biggest thing to point out or to take away from this slide and the following slide is the different modes of transportation. So let me explain that very briefly. Um, we first like to have a setback, a setback off of the road or off of the sidewalk. There's two reasons for this. One, safety, safety and security, space off the street. Even if it's an innocent car crash, we don't want to car careening into the building or the lobby. But moreover, um, we want to keep building inhabitants safe from um, a car bomb attack. And you may think it wouldn't happen here or it wouldn't happen you to you, but we had some um, pretty dire events happen just uh, in Defiance, Ohio, very small town up close to Toledo. Um, some things happened there when we were designing a building uh, that changed our client's mind about safety. So things can happen anywhere. Um, so the setback is for aesthetics uh, and safety, but also if you review the history of the American courthouse in America, the evolution of that archetype, um, there's always a setback for government or court. So as not to confuse the building with a place of business or mercantile. So we have uh, historical roots that go way back that uh, inform us that we should have the courthouse set back a bit. And when you drive into a town, if you've ever been to a new town, Perhaps you uh, need to, you're in a new town, you're looking for the courthouse. I often do that. I'm looking for courthouses a lot in new towns. Um, I look for lawn. If I don't know where the address is, you drive into the community and you can often tell where the courthouse is because it has a lawn in front of it. And so that's important to us that we have a proper setback and that's kind of what the dash line is representing around the building, kind of a perimeter. We also desire distinct circulation patterns, and that means that we want uh, inmate circulation or folks coming from the jail to appear in court. We want that separation separate from a service entrance where uh, trash pickup, service deliveries, and things of that nature occur. And then we want staff and judicial entrance separate. And likewise, we want the public entrance very separate. And this has to do with both vehicular and pedestrian movement on the site. So when we're designing a courthouse, not only do we design it to be aesthetically pleasing, we have to meet all of these criteria. And this is per the Office of Homeland Security and the Ohio Supreme Court. So when we submit plans uh, to the Supreme Court, they look for these safety measures. Next, on the interior of the building, 
The interior of courthouses get quite complicated quite quickly. We want separate ways of circulation, both horizontally and vertically through the building for us, just for folks visiting the building. We want the judges and all the judicial staff, the entire judiciary to be able to move freely about the building and never encounter someone who's in custody or just a visiting guest of the building. So we have to keep three areas separate. For example, the yellow arrows represent the path of the public and they have uh, limited access points and they can go into the courtroom, of course. Public corridors, restrooms, elevators, etc. The blue area here represents the judicial staff connection piece. They have their own elevators and stairs, offices, and they feed into the courtroom from the back. And then the pink area represents the in-custody holding areas where uh, defendants are appearing before the judge and they can be held securely, safely, and privately, which is their constitutional right. The courtroom is the only place where all three types of people in the courtroom should meet. And when we submit plans for approval to the Ohio Supreme Court, this is what they evaluate to make sure that we've done this. And this keeps all building inhabitants safe. And from the law enforcement perspective, they are in the courtroom making sure that uh, order is being kept and they can be assured that that, the courtroom is a very vulnerable location because that's where everyone comes together, but then that is where the monitoring efforts are kept. So distinct and separate circulation patterns on the site and inside the building are key. The recent study process summary, um, we don't necessarily have to read all of this, um, but there's been um, some questions or some desire for us, I should say, to add clarity to the events of the recent feasibility study. We started in August with our first meeting. We conducted various field reviews and assessments. Then we provided an update to the facilities task force. We uh, had input sessions with various departments. We met with juvenile and probate court, juvenile probation, we met with common police court. Uh, we uh, invited domestic relations court. Uh, no representation was present at this particular meeting, but we have since spoken with them. Municipal court was present and we uh, visited with the county clerk as well. Then on into October, um, we uh, provided an assessment, in other words, the conditions of the existing courthouse for mechanical and structural needs uh, on all, uh, all additions and construction of the courthouse and uh, reviewed the program with the design committee. Uh, we then, um, you can see there's a couple of weeks between all of these meetings. So we would meet, we would go away and work, come back, present, discuss, go away and work, amend our work, bring it back for feedback. So it's a constant give and take process. We did uh, provide a concept layout review in November. And again, this was a communication tool to show visually uh, the adjacencies of the courthouse and to prove that all of those circulation patterns were in order and that we were doing what we were required to do. And then we provided another uh, status update given in late November. Oh, pardon me. And then in December, um, we reviewed uh, detailed uh, concepts. We took those diagrams to the next level and we reviewed those with uh, the departments that you see here. And then we, uh, in December, continued to review those with the presiding judge. And then on through December the 13th and the 17th, we continued to work and review our concept plans. And then in January and culminating in February, the uh, sort of the final answer to those three questions were delivered to that committee. How big should it be? What might it cost? And can these entities share? So that work uh, spanned from August to February. And that was a lot of work in a short amount of time. All right, at that time, some of you may have seen this. At that time, this is where the plan uh, was. This is where we stopped working. Now, the, the whole idea behind this plan was to get one central point of entrance into the building 
for the public. So I'm going to point out some highlights here. This again is our um, uh, antique courthouse on the corner. This is the square. This is the parking deck, the garage. Um, we're dividing the side into two, where we have sort of a public side and then a private side. This drive right here was developed for uh, the judges and elected officials to park securely under the building and also in custody to be brought in so they can be safely offloaded and taken into court. So the, they would drive uh, into a lower area of the building. This arrow represents access from the square. This arrow represents access from the existing parking deck. Now, that was sort of a, a bonus that happened, was that nice circulation from the parking areas to the square. This was really what was driving this design, was that central point of entrance that was convenient no matter if you parked on this site or on the square, whereas now folks have to walk all the way around the building. So we wanted a, uh, a connection between those two. This allows for a common entrance point for anyone entering the building to be checked, screened, so the law enforcement can secure the building. As you know now, this occurs down in the basement level. There was very little room for that because that building was not designed for that, as a lot of courthouses have had to uh, amend their operations and just make things work with what they have. This would be a secure entrance for the public coming off here. And this sidewalk design and the compass star just made the drawing look nice. No one decided on that. It just makes it look better than just a you know, gray concrete line. But the idea here was that that would be a very nice public space, perhaps a fountain, perhaps flags. None of that was really discussed as it was not the focus. But um, there's a lot of potential there for that to develop. However, um, so that's where we put our pencils down in, in February. And now we've been asked to complete the work. And so we've progressed beyond this. And we'll show that in just a few moments. In 2018, we ended with a scenario that showed shared space of over 50,000 square feet. That means that hallways, elevators, stairs, break rooms, some file areas, uh, public restrooms, a security checkpoint, in custody areas. These are areas that both courts could share. And we spent a good amount of time analyzing that and speaking with both entities about that. Municipal court building was close to 26,000 square feet. County court, a little over 77. That brought the total size of the building to just a little over 153,000 square feet, a number that some of you are familiar with, bringing uh, an estimated project cost about 45,000. That was 45 million, excuse me. The 45 million, and, and so that was at the end of February. And then when we were asked to come back and complete the project, they said, that was great, but that's too much. So let's get that down. So we're working on what that looks like. In order to meet all of those requirements that we shared with you, um, the desired amount of courtrooms, the desired amount of magistrate hearing rooms, the fact that each magistrate and judge deserves an office, um, proper law enforcement areas, things of this nature, we're asked to reevaluate that, and we, we are. And this is a snapshot of where we sit today, what we think we can accomplish. It brings a shared space to 38,000, municipal court to 24,000, county court to 67,000 square feet for an approximate size of about 129,000. We could round that to 130. And then this is bringing the, the cost to where a little over $38,000, $38 million. Why am I hung up on that? That would be fantastic. Um, and so even still, we have a little work to do because that's still a little bit much. So we're being tasked with meet all these people's needs, and there's a lot of them, but let's get the cost down. So we're working on those efficiencies. This is not something that happens quickly, um, and it does take much work. Current square feet is? 129,000. No, current. Oh. Well, that was in prior slides. Can some? Yeah, 55,000 and change. Yes. What are we demolishing? Can I finish my presentation, please? Thank you. Yeah, we can go back to that slide. I have no problem with that. Um, the, so the current look or the current uh, site plan, the way it is today, 
um, pencils down, come to a meeting, is this, and that we are reevaluating um, sort of the desired setback and sort of the filling in of this building and then a front entrance and a back entrance that would go into a common lobby and have the secure entrance going into the building that way. So essentially, we still are maintaining that entry point, but it's on the inside instead of the outside. Uh, and we have reviewed this with the sheriff's department, and they are very much in favor of this of this uh, uh, this idea. So we're hoping to cultivate this as we go on. Um, and again, it seems important to have a front door to the front of your city, but then there's a great need for a back door, which addresses all of the parking needs. So that's what we're working on, all the while keeping that one point of secure entrance into the court facility. So this is where we are today. Oh, and just for fun, here's a picture in our research. Um, we came up with an, a picture of the uh, existing, the building on the corner with just the first phase of addition, no addition on the back. And there's a, a nice house here um, where the 1969 courthouse was built. Um, so that's a fun, that's a fun picture. A little bit of design context. Um, it's very important that the courthouse look like a courthouse. Now, since um, American architecture is rooted in the federal style, among others, someone could take issue with that, I'm sure, um, we like to see pediments on our courthouses. We like to see columns. Nothing says enter here like a set of beautiful columns. And so we're sensitive to that. We have, um, photographed a lot of the buildings in the city, old and new, We've, we, have, we didn't photograph that, we found that one, we photographed these others. <laughs> um, and we study things like window heads, doorknobs, fences, sidewalk patterns, we study all of these things, and they influence the ultimate design for the community. The texture has to be right, the scale has to be right, the color has to be right, there's so many things that have to be right. And it's not as easy as it sounds, especially when we have to make all these people happy. And just to show you, these are some of our new projects. They all have columns, they have pediments, they have a stateliness about them. They suited the community they were built in. None of these will be right for you. And we'll take your architectural stylings and parlay those into a design that's right for you just like we did these communities. That's it for the presentation, and now we'll be opening the floor for questions. Are there certain rules that we need to announce? Uh, yeah, yes, we are going to uh, uh, accept public comment uh, we would ask that anyone who is interested in speaking uh, approach the podium, state your name and address, and limit your comments to uh, five minutes. And so does anyone, would anyone like to speak? As a point of order, could I ask again for a clarification on comparison between square foot today and square foot projected? I'm sorry I didn't come all the way over there, but I'm sure you can hear me. That's okay. Thank you, Keith. <laughs> You could probably use this microphone here, Bill. existing county courthouse which is the 1940 to 19 1840 to 1878 plus the 1969 courthouse is approximately 55,000 square feet the municipal court I'm trying to remember what that is is just under 20,000 today 135 so the municipal court today is 135 okay thank you uh, I'm Jean Manick. I just got a dumb question. What are we demolishing? Are we going to be keeping the present courthouse at least 
because that's what everybody comes to see in the city. And that is, I think that's the big goal of contention with a lot of people right now. Are we keeping the courthouse? Because again, that is representative of our city. Um, it's a beautiful edifice. And, but again, what are we demolishing? <laughs> somehow oh there it is there you go that's a very good question I was saying not a dumb question at all so we are proposing to keep the original courthouse building which is this little piece and the two squares that flank which are uh, 1840 or I'm sorry this was 1840 then we have the additions and the tower there's a large piece that was added on to into the back that we're proposing to remove if you are on okay. this street you can see where the brick changes where the brick, yeah, I know definite, what you're talking about did this go off? No, there it is. Uh, so where that brick line is, we are proposing to remove the back of that building. The construction of the building is wood. The floors are very creaky. Um, uh, it, so there's, there's a variety of reasons for that. One being that the layout, it's very difficult to achieve a layout that supports the court's needs with the, with the hallways and all the little tiny rooms that are in it. So when you build a new edifice, you're going to try to kind of keep it in concert with the courthouse that's already there. I mean, in some way, shape, or form. I was looking at your other buildings that you made, so you'll be kind of keeping... Yes. In, ...in tune with what we already have. And you've reminded me of a point that I failed to make in my excitement to share, <laughs> that um, one of the reasons why we changed to the, this is a current concept from the prior, which had the building coming way up in here, is because we wanted to allow this building to breathe a bit. It's so beautiful. It is. And so we wanted to back off of it, and we felt like that big new building would smother it a bit. And so we're wanting to back away from it and make the connection a bit thinner to it. Um, so that you really see the building um, and let that mansard roof come up and be its own thing. And I think I like the idea, too, of the fact that you are going to try to at least architecturally stay within the bounds of what we already have. Yes, ma'am. That makes a little bit of sense. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I suppose so. Yes, sir. That's what we're... My name is Jeff Bramley. I'm a lifetime Medina County resident, graduate 1974 Medina High School. Um, I uh, worked as a law clerk for Judge Phil Beard. I was in this building. Um, this has the columns. Everybody knows this is the courthouse when you come to town. This, in the plans that are being proposed, this is going to be destroyed. There's no disagreement among Right, Monica and, and yes. Mr. Hudson, this is going to be destroyed. That's correct. And I, I just had to speak out because uh, I think that would be a shame. This says courthouse as much as the other courthouse, the older courthouse, uh, and I cannot see why we want to demolish this. If we can make, keep the old courthouse and make it work, why can't we do it for a building that was built in 1969? Also, I wanted to say... Um, Steve Brown came with me, and he's got a picture of the old courthouse, but these are from my office, by the way, and they sit in the 9th District Court of Appeals in their Medina room. Um, we were around, Steve was already a practicing attorney. I was finishing up my last year of law school when municipal court was on the second floor of the open pantry, and some of you may remember that. And, and that was uh, uh, where the Rite Aid is now. And a gentleman who was charged with DUI burned it down. He thought he was going to get out of uh, going to jail. Well, that didn't happen. They caught him, of course. <laughs> and uh, so right where we are today, this is where I began practicing in municipal court. And uh, this is where it was held. And the city agreed to fund the current municipal building right across the street. And I don't know, Monica, if you know this, but when that building was uh, designed and built, it was, it was made so that a, another floor could be added to that building, an exact duplicate of the basement and the first floor, and there could be another courtroom added without, with minimal dis disturbance to the current court. 
So I'm wondering if you had any uh, thought of, of doing that and, uh, you know, and not combining the two facilities. Um, you know, I don't know what's better in the long run, but that's something that should be considered. And I, I hardly ever, I don't see any, anything in the news media about that. So I wanted to bring that to your attention. Okay. Thank you. Yes, I can answer or address at least some of those, some of those points. Um, uh, in, in, the, uh, in current times, we no longer, just the architectural community, no longer advocates for planning for a future floor because building codes change. And so um, I believe at one iteration of these plans, um, that situation was studied and the current building code does not allow for that second floor addition to that courthouse because footings, footing designs have changed, column bearing has changed. And so for that reason, we don't advocate anymore for clients to spend extra money on planning for a future second story or third story or what have you, simply because typically that is not done in a timely enough fashion to where the building codes permit it. Um, so that's probably not an answer that, that you were desiring, and I apologize for that. It just is what it is. Um, was, do you remember the other question, the other point? I think I've lost it. Uh, but that, that, is, that is why that was not considered um, adding on to that building. They are beautiful. The common wood, there's white oak in the hallways, there's uh, beautiful trim. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a treasure, and I can't understand why you want to care about Another point to make to that is something you might see, uh, and not to be argumentative, but to be a, uh, uh, informative, is another uh, thing you might see when you're in that beautiful building is uh, someone in a jumpsuit with handcuffs or a waist shackle standing at the counter to get bonded before they go back to jail or before whatever their situation is. And we don't want that. We want folks who are there um, to be um, dealt with and helped um, to have dignity about that. And so the new courthouse, whatever we end up designing, will allow for clerks to deal with in custody persons in private and not have them be brought out in the public um, to be humiliated. So just something to think about. Whoever has the timer, I wish you'd start about now, because I'm wise to that trick. Mark Frederick, 6146 West Smith Road, Medina, Ohio. United States of America, continent North America, planet Earth, Milky Way solar system. A lot of you know me. <laughs> Paul Rose, nice to see you. It's been a while since you and I were at John Keller University band together, about 1974. Thereabouts, I don't want to age us. Uh, Mayor, nice to see you, meet you. Congratulations, I trust you have a lot more sense than our past police chief who shot himself in the rear end, at least you never did that. I would like to admit, I'm not making it up. A lot of things we don't want to talk about, but I'll tell you. I remember when Cole's parking lot had a bunch of cows walking around on it. I remember the old Kmart. I remember Conley's up on Fenn and uh, 42. I've been around the block twice that I admit to. Don't want to talk how many times I didn't admit to. I would like to say that I, I would like to thank, first of all, the architects. Very beautiful, wonderful presentation. Thorough, facts, things that I came here not expecting. So you knocked me down a couple steps, but you didn't get me. What I'm really here to say is, I don't want to see waste of my taxpayer dollars. I'm paying around 12,000 a year real estate tax on my shack, and that's quite a bit. And I want to make sure it doesn't get wasted. And before I'm done, I'm going to mention a word about progress, because I'm not against that either. But I don't want to see a waste of, and I see the figure change from what I walked in with, I was going to say 44 million which was 45, and the last I saw, they knocked it down to around 38. Half the world wishes I was senile, they ain't that lucky. But it's a lot of money going out the window. And I don't mind spending money if it's something necessary and needed. But when I heard 
the presentation say that the needs were, quote, all over the place. My question is, how long are they going to stay there? When are we going to hammer this down, nail it down, and plan ahead? One step in front of the other. Not just go running around knocking down buildings. I heard another word tonight. The building was called antique. Your word. I prefer to call it historic, beautiful, classic. Why does Wayne County, Holmes County, don't make me take you on a tour of Ohio, have all sorts of beautiful stone courthouses? And all of a sudden, Medina's got to knock ours down? And even if we leave the facade, which is merely what it's going to be, we may as well just go to Hollywood. Build one out of canvas, paint it up, look pretty. I know we need something done. The question is what? I would also like to commend you that apparently there's been a whole lot more input than I was aware of, which is one reason I came tonight, because I'm going to give you input. And whether you like it or not, I'm watching. And until I croak, I will be watching. So that's more for the politicians here. Because I know no matter how much money you give government, they'll spend every penny and need more. And they'll come after us with another levy and another proposal and another building and another speed ticket and what other scheme plan they can come up with. And they'll blow that money too. And you guys know I'm right. Even the politicians, they get their hand out of their pocket long enough would understand that. And Swedek, I haven't had a chance to meet you, but you got a message on your phone too. Now you know who left it. Uh, I would kind of like to know which Einstein or idiot, because I'm not sure, is proposing this scheme. And I'm going to use the word scheme, scam, plan, whatever you want to call it, until we've nailed down some facts on this, the absolute necessary needs. To me, it's just a scheme. If it's a plan and if it's a need, I have no problem with that. But I don't want to see 38 million squirted out the window of my tax dollars. Mark, you have about 30 seconds left. Oh, we're really hushing. Okay, here's a question. Medina City, Medina County. Paul Rose, you heard me talk to you about the garbage. May the two never meet. All of a sudden, we're going to meet on a courthouse now. The county and the city couldn't get together on garbage collection and re, uh, recycling and stuff. What makes me think they're going to get together on this? I'm not a fool. I hope you're not either, and I hope the politicians don't think we are, because we're not. A couple of us are aware, a couple of us are alert, and a couple of us are watching. I've raised German Shepherds for a long time, and I know what a good watchdog is. I've got some of Deputy Potter's bloodline running around mine and Bill Jack's dogs, too. Thank you very much. And I might have to stop by a couple of those county commissioner meetings every Tuesday, like in the good old days when I did. You're always welcome, Mark. I know that. You're just so happy to see me. All right. Get there. Pat Walker from Save Your Courthouse, 523 East Friendship Street, Medina. It's clear that the county is planning a wrecking ball on the courthouses without a vote. It will be devastating. During the construction, people will not come to see our merchants and participate in our events while there will be mud and guck all over the east side of the square. Meanwhile, the people who spend money in Medina, the city of Medina will be sitting in Litchfield. After spending about 30 to 40 million, whatever it would be, we're going to get an inadequate substitute and it's not due to the architects. I think they did a great presentation here today. I'm sure they're very competent. The problem is the words that we heard. They talked to the people that they had access to. They did not have the ability in the facil and facility plan to talk to everyone. For instance, they did not talk to the domestic relations court. I don't think the domestic relations court probably was even invited to that meeting. They didn't talk to adult probation. They didn't talk to the law library. In fact, 
when you see the list of things that need to be in the courthouse, the law library is not even listed, and the law library has a contract with the county to stay where they are, which is the basement of the courthouse, until 2026. So therefore, when the initial study was done to determine whether or not the municipal court and the county court could be put together in one building, they didn't have all the information. The people were not talked to to get the information. So then we start with bad data, and then we go from there. The only way the voters are going to have a say is we put the courthouse initiative on the ballot. It would allow the Medina City voters to vote. Now, I've been asked why the Medina County voters under this initiative don't get to vote, and it's a simple, practical matter. If the city voters only are voting, you only need about 1,000 signatures from the city voters. If you have the county, you need at least 6,000 signatures, and that's a lot harder to get. So um, in the time frame that we have, we have a short period of time. So those who agree, please sign the initiative petition. After this meeting, we'll have people outside and have your friends um, take petitions and have your friends sign. We're trying to get them back by Thursday. And also you can come to the law office, which has the Save Your Courthouse sign, which is a red sign. And we're across from Garfield Elementary School. We'll be there from 8 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Um, every day through Thursday. Thank you very much. Uh, Carol Gurney from Montville Township. Um, I think the presentation is excellent that the architects gave, but I see two things when I listen to the presentation that I don't think are being addressed. One is the parking uh, is cut in half. So I know it's full whenever I go through there during the day and even the parking garage seems to be full. So how are we addressing the additional parking? And secondly, the cost of 38 million, does it or does not include moving all these people out of this facility while it's being renovated and then moving them back? Does it include that or not? No, it does not. So it is more than 38 million, the, the total cost. So at some point we need to understand the bigger plan before you go ahead with any, anything, what is the total cost going to be for this parking and the interment, inter, inter, interment, yes, thank you. Hello, Monica Russell. I had a couple of questions that I just would like answers to. One being, how will this be paid for specifically? And the other, with respect to the law library, what is the plan with it? I understand the concept plan was just a concept to see if both courthouses could fit in the footprint, but how has that been addressed? So those are just my two questions that I would like to hear some input on. To answer the question about the law library, we have had, um, I personally had a lengthy phone conversation with Pat, um, oh, so that was you that I talked to. Well, we had a very long and detailed conversation, and uh, I've conveyed that back to the group, and the law library will be in this building. The issue that we're having uh, is I'm trying to find a way to have it accessible 24-7 as you've requested. That becomes very complicated in a building that has such secure demands. So we're looking at locating it somewhere on the perimeter to where there can be an outside door to it and that would not then have access or, or a secured or controlled access rather than into the rest of the building. So we did take your concerns very seriously. We have listened to those. Uh, and it's just a process that we have to go to go through rather to get all of these pieces and parts in the right place and once that we my team and I are confident that we have that plan we we will release that plan what we don't want to do is release plans that are uh, incomplete things that we know are missing or are insufficient in any way um, because then they get in, misinterpreted as a final thing so at some point um, 
when we're directed um, by the county and the city to release those drawings, we, we will be glad to share those with you. And at some point in the near future, we will request a personal meeting with you. Um, we just haven't, that has not been um, a necessary step yet, but it is forthcoming. Correct, yes. Thank you for calling me. A lot of folks don't want to reach out, they just want to complain, and so I appreciated that you made the effort to reach out. Yes. Cost. Yes, let's answer this, uh, Monica's question before we move on. Yes, how is it going to be paid for, I believe, was a question on the floor. Yeah, so the funding of the courthouse, um, as everybody probably knows, the uh, auditor they reappraised all the property this year. Those additional taxes will be collected next year. That'll be somewhere between one and $1.2 million. The uh, state budget also increased the reimbursement for indigent defense. That's gonna generate somewhere around $400,000. And then we will be getting monies from Nexus next year also, which, you know, they estimated about 1.2, it'll probably be closer to about $200,000. So that those three sources of monies will cover a debt payment, will cover the county's portion of the debt payment. Well, it's just like, think about it this way. When you go buy a home, you may not have $100,000 in your pocket to pay for that home, but you can afford a monthly mortgage payment. And so what they're working on is a way to pay the debt service or pay their mortgage payment uh, so that at the end of a certain year period of time, the, the full debt is paid off. So it's just like a car payment or a mortgage payment. We, we haven't determined that yet. The moving expenses and those things are not yet determined. Um, and you know, the, one of the reasons we wanted to have this meeting very early in the process is to hear these things. Um, so those decisions have not uh, been made yet. Or, or those factors are unknown, I should say. Can I just follow up just for clarification, make sure I understand. So it'll be financed and you're anticipating that the, like on an annual basis, the payments that you would have to make on the financing could be paid through additional real estate taxes that you expect because of the reevaluate the reappraisals, uh, money received from Nexus, and what was the fund? Indigent Okay. And that's through collection of court costs? No, it's through the state of Ohio. The state of Ohio reimburses the county uh, for right now, well, uh, prior to June 30th, for 48% of his indigent defense costs. Uh, in the new budget, they raised that amount to 75%, and in 2020, it goes up to 100%. So the county spends, uh, well, our, our budget for indigent, for the public defender's office alone is a little over $600,000. It's the, it's the reimbursement from the state. So it, it's not going to affect what the public defender gets or how much is paid for indigent defense. It's just that instead of recovering roughly 50% of the cost from the state, we'll recover 75 and then in 2020, 100% of the cost. Okay, so it's just that extra above the 50% that you're gonna be allocating to the debt payment? Because the rest would be going to- it, It's all general fund money, essentially. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Terry Hayes, and I'm actually from Montville Township, but the city line is right over the fence in my backyard. So um, I have two questions. Number one, I understand that the, the 1969 building will come down, but the original building will remain. Will that still be in use? Yes, it will. Okay. And then the second question is the timeline for this project. How long will this take? Because I assume that Broadway will be closed for the duration. I wouldn't necessarily assume that because those we have not even had those discussions and that would uh, at that time involve a constructor uh, and how they plan to stage the site. So I, I couldn't speak to whether or not it would be closed at all or for any duration of time. I just don't know that. Um, and the full duration of the project, um, we are in the infantile stages of the planning and development. Um, so we're still looking at, I don't know, two to three years, two years before it's complete. These projects take a very long time, 
uh, and there's good reason for that. They need to gestate so the citizens can participate and these types of things can happen. Well, I'm speaking, I'm referencing specifically the actual construction time. Yeah, construction itself would take uh, roughly 18 months, but then again, we don't determine that either. Your constructor will, um, and that's a different phase of the project, but you could anticipate roughly 18 months. Fully, fully complete. Yes, ma'am. Steve. Yeah. My name is uh, Steve Brown. I'm an attorney. I've been practicing in Medina County for 48 years. As a matter of fact, tried my first case in the new courthouse, Thanksgiving week, 1970. Monica, you said um, that apparently the existing building, the municipal court building, would not meet current needs. What are those needs that it won't meet, and who says so? Uh, and, and the reason I say that is that when that building was built, and I was on the Bar Association Executive Committee back in the early 80s when that all came about, the basement of that building has uh, heating, ventilating, electrical, mechanical equipment for a second courtroom. Uh, what is the need to combine that with uh, the proposed new common police court? What's the stated need? Uh, so your first question was re was regarding the uh, clarifying the inadequacies of the municipal court building. Was that your first topic? No, I want to know what is the need. What mm -hmm. is the stated need to take the municipal court from a thirty what thirty six year old building right. and move it into what will be the remains of a fifty year old building? Uh, why do we need to do that? Well, let me just say that when we're hired to do a project, we're hired and somewhat you know, told what to do. We want a new municipal court. Now, there's more to it than that. This municipal court building has been uh, studied and evaluated for years. There is just not enough space in it. And if I could tell you that Ms. Abbott and Ms. Latuska, who are here from Municipal Court, they share a hallway with attorneys, uh, probation officers, people in custody, the common public, um, and that hallway is four feet wide, maybe. Um, that's just one inadequacy we just to mention, that there's a lot of circulation needs that are, are inadequate. That's just one example. Um, there are people in the basement of that building an unfinished basement with concrete block walls and unfinished concrete floors. Offices have been fashioned out of various partitions and they've made it as nice as possible. Right, they, basically what they did was right. they took the now, second courtroom and they right. put a bunch of administrative and probation it's people It's probation down there. department, Agreed. yes. So it's really um, the circulation patterns don't meet the modern courthouse need. Um, so if I were to go into that building as a citizen and want to go downstairs to uh, observe court, um, the traffic pattern is just very inadequate to do that. Okay. If, if I may here's, add. Here's, here's the reason for my comments. When I got out of the Army, I was a uh, industrial engineer at Ford, and one of the things you do is cost-benefit studies. What is it about these stated inadequacies of the municipal court that are worth about $70 million, which will be the cost of this project, including debt service over the life of the loan. What is it about that? Well, that's not the share that the municipal court is participating in. They won't be spending that much. I believe their shared or desired share is $8 million. If I, if, I, if I may add and clarify uh, from the council's perspective and maybe the administration, we've been talking about this and Judge Chase can vouch for it of about 20 years. And the inadequacies of the court currently, we've all had visits over there over the past years, council members have. And this, there's a space issue, first of all, just about uh, from the administrative perspective of the clerk of courts. And then of course, with the inmates and the public each sharing the same space, and of course the magistrates and the lawyers all sharing the same space. So we recognize that. And adding another court, we've talked about that a lot. We went through that, we've done studies on it. We've been through it on numerous occasions. The, what makes this attractive is combining with the county, and I know many people mentioned there's some hurdles with that, and we have to work together, of course, is the efficiencies that are derived. Not only efficiencies derived from the entrance, because if you have one main entrance for all courts, 
you only have one secured entrance and you don't have to have a secured entrance at the county court and a secured entrance at the municipal court, which costs money. The other factor is the utilities used and the benefits of air conditioning, heating, and all the other shared spaces that you have. You don't have to have a large of a court. If you did it separately, you have to have a larger municipal court and, again, a larger uh, common pleas and domestic relations and uh, juvenile court. So we're trying to combine those to save money. And I think uh, if you've been following us on council, at least, our goal is to save money. We don't like spending money too much at the city, and we try to save it, so we're trying to save it. We're we don't know exactly what it's be, but we don't like to spend we don't like to spend that much money. Matter of fact, but we're trying to get a ballpark of what we're going to participate in. Well, correct. You got to remember the current uh, special projects fund at the courthouse uh, at the municipal court is about four point two million dollars that has been saved up over the years to apply to a new building. So. It's about 3.8 that's left over. That's what we're talking about. We try to look over there to redo the court over there. How do we add on to it? How do we make it work? And the cost was about, I think, around $7 million. So we're thinking to ourselves, now, wait a minute. The efficiencies that are derived long term between the courthouse, having the combined courthouse, is the, the cost savings that you have through utilities and operations. That's kind of what piqued our interest a little bit is how could we save money long term? These initial upfront costs, as you mentioned, we could do it, but what makes most sense long term? That's why we wanted to try to see if we can work together to combine these. Because again, as a lawyer, as you know, it's better to go to one courthouse rather than two. And we also have the issues always people going to the municipal courthouse saying, well, you, you got to go to the common pleas courthouse. People at the common pleas courthouse saying, well, you got to go to the municipal courthouse. So let's solve some of those problems long term to go to one place. And that's kind of a benefit that is an unintended benefit, but it happens. As in council judgment to do a combined effort to save money long term, yes. I think we've all discussed it. The number is what the number is. Is it eight million? Is it less than that? Of course we want it less than that. But you're correct. We we researched this for over twenty years and we've been we thinking about this and what makes the most sense and this is what we came up with the conclusion. So thank you. I'm a resident of Medina City. Just going off of what you just said, piggybacking, how do you split utilities between the city and the county, like when the gas bill comes every month? How would you do that? You were just talking uh, the, about sa the same way you do in any commercial building that has multiple tenants. You take the total number of square feet, you <coughs> ration it. it. You divide it out between what the county has, what the city has, and if the bill is a uh, hundred bucks and it's a seventy-five twenty-five split, the county pays seventy-five, the city pays twenty-five. Okay, well, we just bought the land that the Masonic Temple was on. Wasn't that for a courthouse? That was for a potential courthouse potential as courthouse. well as a parking deck, and we're using uh, a good portion of it for the courthouse. Uh, we've not awarded that bid yet, but the court, I'm sorry, parking deck, for the parking deck, but it's going to go in a east-west configuration versus north-south, and then almost like an L-shape, if you will. So it's going to come behind City Hall and then go towards Liberty Street. The other thing we're doing is we tiffed that property as well as the chamber site that was redeveloped. And we have another parcel that we possibly can still use on Elmwood, which repays the sales tax back to the city to ultimately pay back the cost of the parking deck that's not covered by the grant. So on the front of the parking deck, and still, instead of building it right out to the road because we're at 100% occupancy of the square and there's a large demand for people to be in Medina, we're going to ground lease that frontage to create more retail space and housing, again, to raise that property tax faster to pay the city back our investment. And um, that, that's why we're doing that. Mr. Coyne also talked about the efficiencies. And Mr. Brown, I know you know this. You're in there day in and day out. Why, why do we need 
attorney client meeting rooms here and there why do we need restrooms in both places why do we need hallways if we shared those spaces those efficiencies heating and cooling everything that's split between the city and the county are are going to be quite a bit of savings for them and for us the current board of county commissioners the current council and the current administration of the city have never been able to get a collaborative approach like this done. We have the right people in place now to take a good attempt at it. I, I can't tell you it's going to happen yet, but we're going to do everything in our power to conserve dollars and do the right thing. Let me, let me ask you a question, too, regarding the courthouse located here off of uh, Elmwood. We did do this study. We had it done. And it was going to cost about 9.1 to 9.2 million, and that kind of we got a little gun shy with that, so we backed off. But you are correct; that was we we designed one, we wanted it there, but the cost was a little bit higher than we wanted to go, so we said no. Okay, so we bought the lot, and we're going to make it into a parking lot. Um, what happens to the current um, city courthouse, uni courthouse? It will be open for reuse. Uh, the city doesn't have a, a need. Uh, we're, we're doing fine where we are here at police department, our, our, uh, our operations here at City Hall. Uh, but if there's some needs in the county, some county operations that aren't currently in the city and we could bring those folks in, be closer to the, uh, the uh, county administration headquarters there. Uh, or if there's a, uh, a commercial purpose, the city will retain the, the building and the property um, versus sell it because there may be a need for expansion in the future so we don't want to lose that opportunity but uh, we, we will not just move offices from City Hall over there I'll tell you that do you have an estimate for the cost of um, housing the current um, courthouse of personnel and business that goes on while well, during construction well, right now, I think I heard Litchfield um, mentioned um, Litchfield would be a good location, but there are other um, buildings I'm looking at. And until we find the exact location and um, I know what type of renovations uh, we have to do, if any, um, I, I don't know. So you don't know, you don't have a cost on that? I don't have a cost allocation. No, I didn't have a cost estimate yet, no. Okay, my other point that I'd like to talk to is one of aesthetics. I'm past chair of the um, Medina Community Design Committee for a couple couple terms, and I was a trustee for many years. Uh, our square now is absolutely charming. It's the reason people move here. People see it, and that is it. It is, I think, in my humble opinion, one of the most beautiful squares in the state. And part of the reason that it is like that is because it has all the different little blocks and there's so much individuality yet it all coalesces. This is a very huge building that I am afraid would overpower our square, make it terribly lopsided. Um, coming in from the east or, or just going down Broadway, I'm deeply concerned about the size of the building. And aesthetically, I just, I don't see how it's going to work. And that's, that's my, one of my, my lar biggest concerns. Um, the other one, was there another plan to put a third deck onto the parking, parking deck to make that one story higher? No, not at this time. I understand it is capable of uh, handling a third floor, but we haven't uh, we haven't gotten to that point yet. Okay, because you are reducing parking significantly. So, uh, ma'am, ma your your five minutes is up. So, Thank uh, you. if you would. Well, part of that was taken with other people talking. Uh, I understand. <laughs> it was your choice to ask the questions. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes, sir. My name is Don Menick. I live off of Springbrook Drive. Um, wouldn't it be more cost effective to? build a courthouse on another location, for example, by the jail or perhaps on the fairgrounds. I fully understand the need for having a uh, modern, up-to-date uh, court facility regarding security and the like. This is not the same place it was, you know, 50 years ago. Um, that would mean one move the people from the old facilities over to the new facilities. Uh, the old facilities could be used to bring in um, Again, these outlying agencies, 
uh, to a central location here in Medina. Uh, or if there is excessive space for that, could be used to lease out um, prime property right on the square. Uh, another question, the yellow, the old house at the corner there, I take it that that is going to remain? Okay, thank you very much. Yes, sir, I, I, I would like to address, I'm sorry, um, I, I address a, a couple of points you made, sir. Um, when when the uh, the county uh, put its team together to look at all of its facilities, we looked at the county administration building as well. And the county administration building is not entirely unlike the courthouse. It is uh, functionally obsolete. Mm -hmm. It was an old school. It has hallways that are eight, ten uh, feet wide. That uh, and you you can't change the walls because of the type of construction. Right. The walls are all load bearing, and we have many of the same issues in in both the old old courthouse and in parts of the new courthouse. So the the cost of renovation is is significant. Um, with respect to uh, moving off-site, that was actually considered some time ago. But I would tell you, in any community that I've seen that has moved the court system out of the downtown area, the downtown area has struggled. Um, and in, in a couple of cases that I'm aware of, um, uh, sort of went away. So it's not, I don't believe, a, a good option for the community. It, it may be a, a money-saving option in the short term but i think it would um i think it would ad adversely affect the city of medina and and the downtown community and you never know what's going to go in there if the county sells that building then you got a commercial developer that might come in and do whatever they would do with it well, so I, I i think that the building is in the site is best suited to a courthouse i think the courthouse should stay there um and and i john you want to say any you have any comments on that i agree <laughs> we, we, we do not want the court to leave the square. <laughs> Address the question that the other lady was just trying to ask about parking. If you're cutting parking in half and you're bringing in staff members from now the county court, you're going to increase the staff in the building and cut half of the parking and still have, and now you're going to have more people trying to use the building. Is the parking going to be adequate? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm at the courthouse quite frequently, and, and rarely, if ever, have I ever seen the upper parts of that deck used. There are occasions where uh, cars, if they, if they have to, they might park out in the sun in the parts of the deck that are not covered, but rarely, if ever, is the upper part of the deck. And I, I don't know what the capacity of the upper parts of the deck are relative to the surface parking uh, that is there. But my guess is there's far more spaces on the upper parts of the deck than there are in the surface parking. And, 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 and I would add, that's got to be part of the plan. So as we go through and design this whole thing, parking is one of the considerations and also traffic patterns. I've had a, a couple of folks that have expressed concern about having... Uh, all of the traffic on that side of town as opposed to splitting it up on both sides of towns, those are things that we need to consider in the process. Yes, we did evaluate the parking, rather in a minor fashion, but it is a point of discussion and we continue to talk about it. So it's not being ignored. I just don't have a good answer for you at this moment. Yes, ma'am. I'm Michelle Nichols. I reside at 800 South Court, but I'm here representing the Medina Community Design Committee some of whom are behind me. Uh, the Medina Community Design Committee has worked for over 50 years to restore and preserve the historical buildings throughout the city of Medina, thus helping to create a desirable community inclusive of a thriving destination downtown. Preservation efforts have led to the placement of the 1873 Medina County Courthouse and Medina Public Square Historic District on the National Register of Historic Places along with nine other structures in the city's contiguous historical neighborhoods. The county commissioners and the city of Medina have a responsibility to offer the best possible services to the residents as well as a responsibility to protect irreplaceable assets of our community. Creating a combined court facility that is harmonious with the overall 1870s architectural look of Medina Square can be accomplished with this thoughtfulness and careful planning. 
any new building plans we hope would include the retention and preservation of the 1873 courthouse, the retention and preservation of the 1872 Brick Sturgis home, the retention of the facade of the 1969 courthouse, a building setback and height that does not overpower the ex existing historical structures, but allows them to keep their position of prominence. Utilizing building materials, elements, and design that seamlessly blend with the historical, with the new. The Medina Community Design Committee stands by and ready to offer assistance and resources to ensure that this project becomes a legacy equal to and complementing those currently on the National Register of Historic Places now and for future generations. Thank you. Thank you. As a, I, as a response to that very briefly, you'll be glad to know that I sat on an architectural review board for three years, and issues like this are, are very important to me as an architect, and I look forward to working with you all more as we get into design issues. And thank you for coming. Thank you. Hi, um, Skip Barron, uh, speaking as an individual, 536 North Broadway. Um, I like, uh, is the parking deck, I assume, to scale there, the existing parking yes, deck? Yes. Well, would that be the number of cars that would fit on the top then? If no, it was that's used? just, uh, at the moment the picture was taken, that's how many cars were there. Right. So mm -hmm. more, it would be full if it were. That's what I mean. Lines. It would, yes. based on what you're saying, yes. that would take care of additional parking uh, at least for the most part and see mm -hmm. there are other parking lots around and this plan doesn't address that right but we are monitoring and and um, considering available parking opportunities within a block of this site okay yes the other thing i, I see you're going to keep the sturgis building which is one of my concerns yes sir uh, the other thing is the facade of the new courthouse um, would lend itself nicely to your drawing up there or your rendering where with an entrance that could go through the keep yes. the facade keep the columns keep what people who have lived here for a lot longer than I uh, value, even though it's not in keeping with the typical style around the square. That's correct. <laughs> um, it's, it's something that, again, I'm, I haven't lived here that long, but in talking to people, that, that's like real, sacred. <laughs> so hopefully you can save the facade, make that an entrance where you go through into a new section, if, if nothing else. And so. what's very interesting to me, since this topic has just arisen, is that the styling of the 1969 courthouse is not akin to anything on the square. And it's trying to model itself as a federal style building, yet the architectural proportions are anything but that. Um, so uh, if the decision to move forward and raise that building goes forth and we have opportunity to redesign a building, even if it has an Italianate style or a federal style, I would hope that we could get the detailing and the proportions and the texture a bit more like your square, and you might even grow to love it more. Hi, I'm Ralph Jock. I live at 523 East Friendship Street. I have a few observations. Um, first, the top floor of the parking deck. It can't be used in the winter because there's no way to get the snow off the top of it. Not true. Well, it's not allowed to be used in the winter because there is no way currently to push the snow off of it. So that's something you'd have to overcome and you'd have to look at that. The other thing that um, comes to mind is we have 1969 construction of the, what we call the new courthouse here. And uh, in 1969, insulation was uh, commonly asbestos. So you have an asbestos removal problem. You have an elementary school less than a block away in the library right next door. Now asbestos is fine as long as it's encapsulated. Nobody's going to get any, any fibers in their lungs. But as soon as you start tearing it down, you've got some major challenges. So I would encourage you not to tear it down because that would then put asbestos fibers all over the atmosphere in the area of the square, absent some very extreme efforts to be sure that that didn't happen. 
Okay, and I'm glad you agree with me. Thank you. Um, the other Nodding thing is... Nodding is not in agreement. It's oh. recognition that I'm hearing you. Okay, yes. Well, good. And, and you understand that that always has a cost, and you not only have to be sure that it's fully captured, but you have to find a place to put it in the landfill. And so that's another challenge that you have um, if you're going to tear down the 1969 courthouse and the other related structures. Now, I can tell you architects are very skilled and um, you're, uh, you know, have a lot of great capabilities. You've done some courthouses and that's great. I guess, did anybody come to you and say, you know, we'd really like to do, fix our problems as cost effectively as possible. Now, nobody says that we have to isolate flows of inmates and public and um, judges, judicial staff, because we don't do that now, and the surrounding rural courthouses don't do that. Um, it'd be nice to do, but we don't do it, and um, you know we don't have to do it. It's nice if you have the money to do it, but you know maybe we don't have the money. Did somebody come to you and say, well, these are the problems that we have. We're trying to find a more efficient way to use the space we have without spending a lot of money and without tearing it down. Were you ever asked to do that? Yes. Okay. And, and we did that. that. What was that? The plan that you had uh, in February? Um, no, it was prior to that. We, we examined all of the built structures in various years of construction. We looked at them from a construction standpoint from a mechanical, electrical, plumbing, fire protection, and information technology perspective. We also looked at how we can achieve, which is very much required, the safe and secure patterns for circulation within the building, in addition to allowing these judges and magistrates to have hearing rooms and courtrooms as, as they need. So we looked at all of those things and determined that the cost feasibility to keep that building in place in order to make that happen was not viable. Okay, yeah, but that includes putting in those separate flows that you talk about, which we don't have to do. And so I guess the, you know, if, if that's your parameter that you have to separate the flows, then I understand you can only tear down. But we don't have to do that. And so I would encourage our elected officials to make the most of what they have and look at how they can fix the immediate problems that are critical without tearing down and starting over. Um, one other thing that I'd just like to say in my time, and that is that, you know, the people, and, and Commissioner Hudson has been very candid about this, the people will not get a vote under the current circumstances. But if you want to vote, sign the petition for the initiative, and at least that will ensure that the people of the city of Medina get a vote on what replaces their courthouse, if anything. Thank Bef you. Before you leave the podium, sir, I'd like to address your asbestos concern because I get very concerned when misinformation is floating about a community and I don't want these folks to feel like they are at risk of breathing air when the building is demolished. So there, there are practices that must be met. The EPA governs these and the building will be fully abated if there is asbestos or any other hazardous material in the building that will all be tested, evaluated, and fully abated separately and independent of demolition. So there is no danger to the common public in the square enjoying a picnic with their family, mm -hmm. going to businesses, what have you, of breathing asbestos. Yeah. And that is required. And furthermore, there are uh, certain landfills that take that material um, that have to be certified and all Orphy. of those good things. So there is no air quality, and I don't like to, to be argumentative in a public setting. I just didn't want folks leaving and being worried about that. Well, I think they should be worried about it because, you know, frankly, you don't live here. I do. I live three blocks away. I have an office a block away. You're right. Kids go to school across the street. Mm -hmm. You know, you come and you do a project and you make your fee and you leave. And then we have to pay the debt service on it. And that was one of my, my additional comments is that if the price of natural gas and oil goes down and the Nexus Pipeline people decide to file for bankruptcy, you don't get the revenue that you expect to get and we won't be able to pay the debt service. So anyway, um, I would encourage people to fix their problems, make do with what they have, stretch your dollar as far as you can, and for the citizens of Medina, sign the initiative position. This way you have a vote.
Thank you. And, and I, I, I'd like to address the issue of the uh, parking deck. There is a snow gate on the top floor of the parking deck that allows snow to be pushed off the edge uh, in an area for it to fall to so that it can melt and go away. So the parking deck can be used, the top deck of the parking deck can be used in the winter um, at any time. Yeah, it's chained off because we have to put calcium there so it doesn't deteriorate the concrete as fast as calcium chloride does. And we intentionally don't permit it to be used when there's not a need for it to save tax dollars. If that's wrong of us, I apologize, but that's what we're doing, sir. Okay, my name is Shirley Ann Walker. I live at 426 South Broadway Street, just down the road. My concern is not about so much the specifics of this, but in the community presentation. For such a major project as this, look how little people are here. Weren't we just here a few months ago trying to save a different historic issue? We were, and it was a small group. I happened to open up the paper a few months ago and said, oh my gosh, look what they're going to do. And I have to research it myself. It's not put out in the public. It's not put out in our utilities. It, nobody knows what's going on. Why? Somebody is letting Medina down. Who? Who? The elected officials? Other people? Who is not keeping Medina like this? Small groups, one individual, who is doing this? Um, elected officials, I don't know, but it can't go on. Um, I went to Dresden two years ago, rebuilt city after the war, you cannot even tell. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. They had to rebuild it after the World War II. You can't tell the difference from a building here to the building that they remade authentically as the way it was. But this doesn't really have to be this way, does it? How long before we have many buildings that are 1969, 19, you know, 2019, and have dates like that? Somebody is letting people down by not letting them know what is going on in this town. It's not fair. Three commissioners vote and a few people, elected officials other than that? No, I think we need to speak and we need to hear. And this lady just said she found out yesterday on Facebook. Come on. Something's wrong in this community. Done. Hi, I'm Patty Stahl, York Township, uh, owner of a historic building on the square, investing in another one. Um, so I just had some technical questions because I get really into the details of a project, as that people know. Um, so I wanted to know if, because a lot of people are concerned about keeping the 1969 courthouse front, um, was there an option to look at keeping that while still being able to meet all the other needs? That option may be a lot more expensive and maybe that was taken off the table. I was just curious about that. We did consider uh, what that might um, look like, and I don't mean look like aesthetically, I mean how would that work, mm -hmm. let me mm -hmm. re restate that, as to how we could maintain that facade. Um, the fact of it is, is that uh, in 1969, um, the, I'm just looking at this picture, um, the methods utilized for constructing that building um, were very ordinary, I mean there's nothing mm -hmm. extraordinary about it, and I don't say that to be offensive because mm -hmm. you all love it. It's your, it's your courthouse. Mm -hmm. But in terms of, you know, we're not dealing with a double white brick wall. Um, we're not dealing with any of those historical type construction techniques that were utilized. It's a brick veneer, sheathing, mm -hmm. studs. It's very, very typical. It has, um, it, has it does have some poured walls, yes. Um, so, um, it's very difficult to maintain a facade of a building. I mean, you pretty much have to 
build another wall behind it Mm -hmm. to make it stay up Mm -hmm. um, while you tear that down, you know, buttressing and shoring and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was just considered really an excess uh, expense Mm -hmm. to try to do that. And I might say that you might want to look at that because that might help with some buy-in from the community. Um, We've had to do that on some other projects I've been involved in. Um, Is there an option to move the law library out of the basement to maybe another location? I don't know if that's feasible, but to free up some more space, maybe cut down on construction costs. We are evaluating the best place for the law library to go, and there's been no decision made about Mm -hmm. where that should be. Right. Uh, And then, um, you know, impact of the construction, during the construction. So obviously, I have a business right on the square, the farmer's market, the events, um, you know, we survive by that. Uh, So, you know, with this construction, I'm sure city council um, commissioners are very aware of that impact. So I just think that that needs to be considered, um, you know, how, how we will be able to do that. Maybe there can be some creative ways to be able to work around that because this is going to be a very long project. I mean, 18 months of construction could be longer. So one thing that we do when we are establishing construction phasing Mm -hmm. and construction schedules is we talk about, uh, local events. Mm -hmm. So is there, um, a certain event on the square, a certain weekend of the year or multiple events through the course of a calendar? Yeah. Yeah. I know your calendar. Well, I'm speaking in general terms. Right. So we try and uh, work around those. Mm-hmm. And if we have to limit the contractor's hours or say you mm-hmm. can't work during those three days or what have you, that's what we do. And we do that collectively. Um, those decisions will not be mine. Mm-hmm. We just advise and share anecdotes from other experiences and try to help uh, decision making flow. And then uh, are there other projects you've done where the a county and a city have done a combined courthouse? Not a courthouse, okay. but other administrative or public projects, yes. Okay, and how... how it's very rare mm-hmm. that the synergy <laughs> between a city and a county can make this happen. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's unique, in fact. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Those were my questions. Thank you. Do I have a minute left? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Thank you. Uh, and me again, Skip Barron, 536 North Broadway. And uh, I forgot to mention that our house used to sit next to the house that's next to the courthouse there. In, Is this it? Nope, it's sat next to it. That's the strong oh, house that was torn down to the right. To the right. Oh, even more. Yeah, one okay. house over before the Sturgis house. It was built there in 1834 by Lathrop Seymour, one of the founders of Medina. And that strong house, I've got a picture of it being torn down in 1967 to make way for the new new courthouse, quote unquote, that doesn't fit the architecture style of the rest of the uh, buildings. But that has nothing, the quality of the construction that you're talking about has nothing to do with why people want to keep it. It's It's the emotional attachment. And again, I'm not from here, but I've talked to enough people Weddings get picture photographed there. Graduations get photographed there. There's 50 years of memories in that facade. And so I just wanted to point that out. It has nothing to do with the basic construction of the building. Thank you. You're welcome. I just have a really quick one. There were three flows that you mentioned in the beginning, and I don't understand the um, flow for the people who work there. Where Where is their entrance? They count as judicial staff. No, where's their entrance? Well, everyone goes through the metal detector unless you're an elected official. So it's combined. That's the rule by the Ohio Supreme Court. If the people managing the building decide to do otherwise, I, that's fine. I won't, I won't be here to manage that. That's not my job. No, no I'm um, sorry. In your first picture, you had three distinct entrances, yeah. but this does not have that, correct? Well, the, the staff come in back here oh, they close do. to their parking. Yes, the judges will have a secure sally port and other staff. Again, that's not determined by, by myself. Um, and then there'll be a staff entrance in the back. Okay, and then where the um, criminals come in through? They come in right and here. And that one. Okay, got it. Can I go now, Carol? Is that okay? All right. Thanks. Just checking. <laughs> uh, Roger Smalley, uh, 426 West Park Boulevard. Former member of Medina City Council, former director of the Community Design Committee. 
I currently uh, run the, the uh, Medina Town Hall and Engine House for the City of Medina and chair the City's Archive Commission. Uh, I would just mention that we could have saved you a lot of time and effort had you been authorized to contact us. We could have sent you dozens of photographs of the buildings on the square of the courthouse throughout its long history. And I, and I, I mention that because it appears that you have been restricted somewhat in the scope of whom you can work with. And I know from the front page of the paper this morning and from personal experience that the mayor is all about collaboration. And there is a body of knowledge in this community that has been developed over the last 50 years that has a deep understanding of the architecture of our square. And to not have access to that, not to be able to tap into that directly with people that know would be a real disservice to this project. So I would hope that right now that the commissioners and, the, and our city administration would authorize Branstead Carroll to talk to us, to meet with us about, it, it, uh, uh, about the design of any possible future building, the exterior design. I'm not looking to mess inside. But how this building looks and how it fits into our community is key. So I would hope that, gentlemen, you could take that step tonight if you could. Roger, just to be clear, no one has restricted Branstead or Carroll from talking with anybody. Based on your earlier comments, it certainly seems. It, yeah, based like on whose who's comments? Hers. I, I, I don't recall Monica making any such comment that she has been restricted from well, talking with anyone. I certainly heard that. And, and, I, and, and again, we're in the beginning stages of designing this project. Which is why it's crucial and, to do and, it now. And well, and that's why we're having this meeting. So well, I'm talking about follow up meetings directly and, and with the people that are providing the designs. Sure, I, I agree and, right. and, and have never disagreed that, that we need to engage uh, the folks in the community, the design committees and historical preservation committees and, and so forth. It's we're not there yet. This is this is very, very early in the project and we're not there yet. Well, we're very early, and yet we we already had one design that was. <laughs> we had a I, I know, we had a concept thing, plan to show the bulk and size right. of the building and estimate the cost. Right. That is it. It was not a design, and and it's not a design. I got that. I understand. And what we want to do is improve on whatever uh, is going to be developed because of community input. Okay. Glad to have it. Thank you. That's assuming we actually need the new building. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Bill Toombs. I live in Chippewa, Lake, Ohio. I've been a township trustee. I sit here and listen. And I'll tell you what bothers me more than anything else. A concern I always had as a township trustee, it's not a negative, it's a fact. There are city folks in this county and there's township folks in this county. We live in two different worlds, folks. Two different worlds. And as a township trustee, I fought constantly for everybody to listen to the township folks also. I have heard that 75% of this is being paid for by the county. I see city officials. That only represents 25% of the expenditure. I think we need to some way publicize and invite every township trustee to sit at this table and listen and talk about how the township or county money is being spent. It is being tonight directed only at city money. And that has bothered me ever since I live in this county. We have two different worlds. And for some reason, the non-city world doesn't get listened to a lot. 
And I think they have some input to whether this should happen or should not happen. So I think there ought to be an effort made to bring every township trustee in here, advertise their meeting for the townships, and see what their opinion is for their 75%. Hi, Sherry Sheets, 342 East Liberty. Um, I'm afraid to ask questions because that eats into my time, but I'll throw a few in at the end. Uh, you started this evening by saying, uh, talking about the deep, rich heritage, which certainly the people in this room fully appreciate. Uh, and you walked us through the buildings that are going to be either torn down entirely or in part. And then you said, and I quote, then the beautiful square is right here. So I would like to bring us back to the fact that these buildings are the beautiful square. They're not separate and apart from that. And some people have said um, you didn't have uh, uh, marching orders initially that might have been in sync with what we're asking. And I, that's really not even up for debate because there are so many people here talking about preservation issues as well as the cost issues, et cetera, who have not had a voice. And it's interesting to me that you stated that it's early in the process, that you're engaging us early in the process. I guess that's early in the process if you're looking at 20 years of history. So you have a different perspective from the people in this room. We're new to this uh, very frightening discussion, really. And uh, I would have thought that there would have been a planning charrette up front where you brought all the stakeholders to the table and you had long conversations and there was no five minute limit, oops, I mean your questions and our answers are part of that also. It wouldn't be a citizen making a statement because they're hearing something alarming and then reading in the paper uh, dismissive comments such as their complaints or hearing these are rants or hearing they just don't understand the process. We're asking you to drop back, be respectful of the people here that have hearts and souls and dollars in the game here, and have a conversation. So now I will yield the floor and ask you to talk to us about when there will be a planning meeting, this isn't one, that involves that kind of participation. Thank you. So there will be follow-up meetings. We'll, we'll probably have uh, more of these sorts of meetings. There will also be meetings specifically with the historic preservation groups, the uh, community design committee, and others, specifically to work with them uh, on, on these issues. I've been told that they're going to have an opportunity to see to approve final plans, and you said this evening you started this out also by saying you've been engaged to start the, the detailed planning now. So I think we need to hear more about that conversation. I mean, let's put the pencils in the air for a moment and have those conversations. And again, not a meeting like this, Commissioner. I don't think that we're satisfied with the meeting. A planning charrette means we break into groups, we've got the flip charts, we really have a conversation. There's no five minute limit. Right. We put these issues on the table and turn it up. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, if, if, if you, you've had your opportunity to speak, and I thank you, I, I, I understand. And we will have more engagement sessions uh, for folks to, to come in and share their thoughts. Um, and we will have specific work sessions with the uh, the design various design groups um, in the city. And if if I mean, I think we have uh, Brian Ferens here somewhere from the historical. He's hiding back there in the back uh, society. And and we're welcome to the uh, uh, the opportunity to talk with them. So, but I think those are separate meetings from a public meeting like this because I think you do need to sit down and actually have work sessions. But you can't have a work session with uh, 75 or 100 people 
that all want to get up and, and speak. I mean, we've already been here for two hours tonight, and, and I think it's important to, to have the feedback from the community, but we have to put some structure and parameters but around two it. Two hours for 40 million is not that much. <laughs> we, we have been- That's $20 million an hour. We, we've been working on this for, for a much, much longer than two hours. So let, let's be realistic here. So. That's the way we're talking about us. We're talking about I understand. About us. Okay, so my name is Barb Kelly. I live at 339 East Liberty. And I have to say, one of the things throughout this that's really bothered me, and I, I've worked in corporate for years. I've worked on multi-million dollar projects. So for the three or four people who got up here and asked about parking, it seems like a very vague answer we're getting. Because right now, you know how many people are employed in the current building. You know how many people are employed in the city building. You know how many parking spaces that requires. So why is it such a vague answer as to, do we need more, do we need another layer on the parking deck? What are we doing? Because I know you have the answer, but it's been very vague here. Well, I can have the answer, but I don't remember all of those numbers off the top of my head. But I mean, I why don't we have that here though? Let me We've finish, had... I didn't interrupt you. I can answer your questions, I just can't at this moment. And I know I'll get misquoted in the newspaper for saying that because I didn't, I wasn't prepared. So be it. Um, we did do a parking count analysis, gosh, as a part of the feasibility study, maybe five, six months ago. And so I'm sure someone could get that information to you, which would show that. We did a staffing count. We did an estimate of visitors based upon the number of courthouses, or I'm sorry, courtrooms. And we evaluated, as I vaguely mentioned earlier, some of the perimeter parking opportunities. It's just here it is. In America, we want to be able to drive our car onto a parking lot property, and we want to see the front door right there we can thank big box stores for this and malls and we want to be able to park our car at the closest available space that we can to the door i do it right we all do it we'll we'll pace the parking lot so we can find the best space close to the door but the whole time i'm circling that parking lot i want to see the door you betcha i do so in this situation when we do parking analyses we evaluate parking within a block diameter or two block diameter just the fact is is people don't want to park and walk even if the parking spaces are available and empty, they just say there's no parking because there may not be parking right at the front door. So we looked at all of these elements to the parking problem um, around the new courthouse. Um, and to be honest, I was not prepared to talk about parking tonight. So I apologize about that. Um, so we'll either have that in the next public session or someone can provide you with that who knows you and can get it to you. That's the best I can offer. I think that that's great because it, it, it could be a huge, huge cost for parking. Sure. And the other thing that didn't make sense to me is we we're talking about how they were going to share, share hearing rooms and things like that. Like that doesn't make sense because you're not going to have less hearings than you, you did before. You're going to still yeah. need all those attorney client meeting rooms right. and you're going to need more of them. I get that. So it doesn't make sense that they're, we're saving on sharing those rooms when you still have the same number of meetings. We won't share hearing rooms, and if I misspoke. I guess it was the attorney-client rooms. Yes, yeah, so attorney-client rooms are different. And I will tell you what, the other day, what was it, uh, last Wednesday, we were in this building preparing for this moment, and we saw a client and an attorney walk from the municipal court building into this building and have their session here in the hall prior to going to court. You shouldn't have that. The attorneys and the clients need spaces to meet and talk about their case privately before they go before the judge. And so one of the elements of this work is to provide that, and we have two, at least two for every courtroom and hearing room in the building. So those are very important spaces. And they are available to be used by whomever wants to use them. If they're open, an attorney and a, and a client can step into that and close the door and have a private discussion. And in total, are there more rooms between the city and the county? than there are now the number of attorney client conference rooms are commensurate with the number of courtrooms and hearing rooms so in this scenario there are more courtrooms and hearing rooms for the county because there's more judges Matt than for the municipal folks so those uh here those attorney client rooms are uh, an equivalent proportion <coughs> as so well. it's not necessarily cost savings 
Well, it could be because you don't always have uh, one cut and dry uh, defended and, and um, uh, uh, d d situation. So, um, but we're working on the math. And you, everyone wants us to be here early and hear input early. Let me step back. But then when we don't have all of the answers, we get eggs thrown at us. We don't have all the answers tonight. So we welcome your continued participation. Thank you. I'm Nancy Banchik. I live at 985 Geyer Drive here in the city of Medina. I wasn't planning on speaking. I was just coming to hear some things. And I want to address the gentleman sitting across the room from me. You've heard me talk at city council before. I'm still frustrated. I feel the citizens of Medina and Medina County are not listened to. And if we are listened to, we're not being heard. Mr. Hudson at the rally last Thursday, somebody asked, do the taxpayers have any say in this? And your answer was no. I'm sorry, those of you who weren't there, this is what he said, no. We elected the three commissioners, so whatever they decide to do, they're going to do. That's wrong. This is still a democracy. We still should have a say in whether you go through with this. I worked in a school system here in Medina. We had advisory committees for all of our program areas. And those citizens of the community, of the county, put in lots of time and a lot of good feedback. And our administration and our instructors listened to them because what we were doing was going to affect every citizen in the county. And I think it's time for our leaders to be leaders. And that means leaders of the county, but just because you were elected doesn't mean you can make any decision without input from the citizens of both the city and the county. And I have no questions, that's all I want to say. So the specific question that was put to me was, uh, will you allow a vote by the citizens on whether the courthouse project should go forward or not? And, and Ralph, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm paraphrasing a bit. And the county commissioners are charged with the responsibility, they have the statutory responsibility to provide facilities to all county departments, including the courts. Yeah, you were more direct and you said no. I did, I did, uh, and, and, and I stand by that. This, this, is, this is something that we are accepting input on from the public, that's why we're here, that's why we're having this meeting, that's why we'll have, no it's not. This was planned well before your rally. Uh, in fact, I announced it at the rally, and, and it, we are accepting public input. So that is the purpose. Now, will, will it be put to a vote? The answer is still no. It is the county commissioners that have the responsibility and the authority to provide for county facilities, and that's what we intend to do. Good evening. My name is Don Walkner. I live in Hinckley. See, I'm one of the township people, and Colleen here is from our township, and an excellent commissioner, by the way. Uh, I only suggest to you, take a look at the possibility of building or, uh, establishing a building commission under 153.21 of the Ohio Revised Code, because you as the county commissioners uh, not only have the responsibility to provide a courthouse, but you can appoint a four-person commission, uh, and you can that commission acts as kind of an, um, an ombudsman during the uh, portion of construction, et cetera, and you can get some people in that commission that perhaps represents some different interests, et cetera. And so that may become a tool, in addition to what you're talking about here, that may become a tool where people can see that maybe their voice is being carried forward. Oh, That's all. Right. So just let you know. Yeah. Okay. Well, first let me say this. 
it's, it's for nobody's applause on either side. But there is, there is somewhat uh, an important issue here about working together that whether you agree with me or we agree with the county or with the city officials or whatever, we should honor the idea that because it rarely happens in government, be it a city council and a, and a county commission or any other body of elected officials to try to get folks that are in different places to work together, that's not a typical thing. So I mean, there has to be some honor given to that uh, straight up front. Because the truth is, I asked one time for the dollars and cents of it, you know, just because that's kind of how I would think of efficiencies. But the truth is, if this plan can be made to work, and if it can be made to work in a way that is financially feasible, both for the people in the county and the people that live in the city, okay, then at the end of the day, that clearly is to our, is to our benefit. And the effort that's gone into trying to get this, effort, this, this project to work is, is certainly directed, is in the right direction. It's what you would want from your elected officials not to continue to see the separation of, of us because you know, we're, we're elected in the county even though we're right across the street and we're over here. It is important to have that, that, that beginning anyway of that, of that working together. And, and clearly most people, if you've been here for a while, you know, what the heck, that has not always been the case. I mean, generally it has not been the case at all. We have not, you know, the two bodies have not worked together. And so from my perspective, First of all, in city council, I give the mayor credit, you know, working with, with, with the commissioners to, to try to work this, this out as, I'm, I'm not sure who, what your name is, but what is your name? Monica. Okay, and I'm Bill Lamb, I'm on city council. Um, I'm not really sure, I didn't write all the dates down, but I mean, how long the planning, the planning has, you know, different things have been going on with county facilities and the condition of county facilities for, for a very long time. And I'm sure that there were funds spent every time there was a study to try to do something to fix it. So it seriously, it does make sense to try to deal with these issues and rectify them and then move forward with all the other things that governments are responsible to do, which are many. I mean, government is a thousand moving parts all the time. It is a lot to keep, keep going. So that part of it is, is really pretty good. Um, truthfully, Monica, at the beginning of the presentation was not, or wherever that picture of the courthouse came in from, my, from, my, from me, that was not a good, good comment or a good place to start because I don't believe there's probably anybody that lives anywhere in the city that doesn't have, hasn't seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of photographs that we have of historic buildings. Secondly, you made a comment that these are the pictures of old buildings and these are new. Well, there's only one new building in the historic district, and that's the building that the county recently bought that used to be, used to be Bank One. All the buildings are old. They were simply restored. In 1982, when I was mayor in 1982, the restoration was generally almost complete. Most of the major work had been done. But the one thing that hadn't been done was there was nothing put in place to protect the restoration. So in 1982, I proposed a legislative uh, initiative to create an historic district. My concern was that some outlier could come in, somebody could come in when the restoration's done and suddenly decide to put in bifold doors, put in weird windows, paint their building, or ultimately tear a building down. And so when that passed in 1988, that was the beginning of these processes that we had so that things wouldn't sneak up on us. And those processes were, you had a plan and you had to go to Historic Preservation Board. We have, um, as Roger Smalley pointed out, we have an archive commission. Um, we have a, a great body of knowledge here that anybody that actually wanted to come into the city and be successful and to garner a great deal of support, you would want to come into the city with your arms wide open and embrace those people in the very beginning, because that's what we require folks to do in the historic district. The reason we have a new courthouse, and it has pillars that you mentioned that it doesn't fit in with the rest of the architecture in town, because the rest of the architecture in town is what? What is the rest of the architecture in town is? Are you really asking me? Yeah, question? I am asking you. And you want my answer? Yes. Victorian. Okay. In 1966, the county commissioners drew up the plans for what you call the new courthouse. Right. 
and they taped them up on the wall, and their plan in 1966 was to tear the old courthouse down and put that new courthouse where the old courthouse was. Now, the reason it has pillars is because the county commissioners in 1966 believed that the city was colonial because all the Victorian buildings were all covered up. Every one of them was covered up. So the commissioners thought this was a colonial town. Elected officials said, all you need to do to restore one of these buildings is stick an eagle above the door and you're good to go, right? It's, it's funny now, but the truth is, the reason the city exists, because the restoration took place at the height of urban renewal, and there was a great movement here because some officials said you couldn't even put an elevator in one of these buildings or it would fall down. So the reason that the city is here is because really the catalyst was the county commissioner's attempt to tear the building, they attempted twice to tear the building down. That's the reason the city is here because after that, the community design committee was formed and they decided that they would work to restore the town and they did it not like in little groups without talking, they went to every single building, every business owner, every property owner, and they talked to them, and they drew up, and there are multiple drawings of the courthouse, they drew up renderings of each building, and they said, if you took that false front down, this is what you could have. And if you look out there now, actually that's what we have, and there was no government money there were no government incentives. They did that by communicating and they did that by talking to people. So I am hopeful that we can work this out because I know that city council wants to do it. I know the commissioners are interested in doing it. However, when you refer to the new courthouse and you refer to the pillars, that courthouse is 50 years old. So for 50 years, people have come to this, this town, they bought a home, lived here, walked to the square, gone up on the steps of that courthouse, taken school pictures, taken family pictures, honored veterans, read their Bible. To most people, if you ask them that come to town, they don't know that that is like the new courthouse that was like the bastard child of, of design. <laughs> they just think that is, that is the courthouse. And so for me, I have told you what I all agree with, but what I don't agree with is to lose the front of that court. Do you know when Shakespeare was born? No. Okay. Anyway, I think he was born around 1654. And the most interesting thing about preservation is the story of Shakespeare's school. Shakespeare started to go to school shortly after that, after he was born. <laughs> I'm not sure when. And I'm not actually, I'm not trying to be funny. But he did go to school. And when he started school, the building he went to school in was 400 years old when he started school. The building is still there, and it is still a school. I've traveled a lot, and somebody else mentioned this. I've seen buildings that are nothing but a front, and the back is a scaffold. I'm glad you moved the setback, because having it eat flush with the old courthouse was clearly a no-go, because you have to accentuate that. And when you say that there's we have a lot of time. Once you set the footprint, that's a real beginning of planning. And once you look at elevations, that's a beginning of the planning process. So that's a nice thing that we moved it back, but it's not okay to take down the front of the courthouse unless you want to rebuild the front exactly like it is. And I see that you've marked the old prosec the prosecutor's office in yellow, that nothing's going to happen there. I don't know if that means nothing's ever going to happen. But that building is the last remaining house on the square. That is a, an exceptional piece of architecture that you, you do not want to take that, we do not want that building taken down. So within the realm of the financing, I am pretty sure that as we go forward, that's a key part that has to be addressed is the face of the old courthouse, which now 50 years old, is an historic, is an historic um, building. Bill, Bill, and, you want to wrap it up? You're way over five minutes. Okay, well, now I'm, now I'm talking to city council. Just give me one more minute. <laughs> I, 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 I appreciate it. 
I am also the executive director of the community design, I'm also the executive director of the community design committee. It was my understanding that the meetings that we held, like this is interesting, but the only way to get input from a group to do the things that we have done in the past is to actually sit down at a table with the plans and with the discussion. Not, not come and see like a, a show, right. but sit down where you're actually discussing or negotiating how this is going to look. Because you do want to bring everybody on board and the process so far does not appear to have worked. Thank you. Hi, uh, I don't know, were we supposed to announce ourselves? Um, Kathy Jones from Sharon Township, and I just want to make one comment to Mr. Hudson. Um, you did say that we couldn't vote on it, you weren't going to allow a vote, and you stated tonight that your responsibility as an elected official is to make sure there's a proper building and so forth to have uh, the courts and so forth, but it's also your responsibility because you are employed by us. We elect, uh, we elect the officials, okay, to listen to their constituents and hear our voices and then to take our input. It's not just that you say, no, you can't vote, you have no rights to have any say, because it is our tax money. We do live in townships and the county, and we do matter too. So it's for you to say at that rally, no, you will never have a chance for a vote, and because you're the commissioner, you have the final say, that's wrong, because we elect you, you work for us. You wouldn't have your job if we didn't vote you in, but your responsibility is also to hear us and what our needs and what we think works too. And that's all I wanted to say, thank you. So we'll, uh, we'll wrap things up for tonight. So there will be uh, additional public meetings and um, I, I wanna thank everybody for coming tonight and uh, sharing your thoughts. Um, I think it's important that we keep in mind that our county is growing. Uh, I suspect that after the next uh, census, we'll have something uh, far in excess of 180,000 people in our county. Uh, we continue to grow and we have grown uh, over the last uh, 30 or 40 years. And I don't know what the population was in 1969 when the uh, courthouse addition was uh, added. Um, that's uh, probably a figure I ought to, I ought to get and, and, and know. But uh, we want to design a courthouse that is going to last the county for the next 30 to 50 years. And we need to think forward. We need to design a facility that, is, uh, that meets, meets the current needs, both from a security standpoint, from a space standpoint, and we have to make sure that we plan and anticipate uh, growth in the future, because it will come. So thank you for coming, have a great evening, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.